Well, I'd like to call to order the regular board meeting, October 3, 2017, of the Orangeboro Board of Commissioners. This time, I would like to ask the City Clerk, Beth Cecil, to please call the roll. Commissioner Jay Bellotta? Here. Commissioner Larry Condor? Here. Mayor Tom Watson? Here. Mayor Pro Tem Bob Glenn? Here. Commissioner Pam smith Right. Here. Thank you, Ms. Cecil. At this time, I would ask the for Commissioner Condor for the invocation and we'll all stand for the pledge as well. Thank you, Mayor. Well, if everyone could please bow their heads and pray with me in silent meditation if desired. Dear Lord God, I have a, we have a question for you. Why? Why would 57 lives be lost? Why would over 500 people be injured? The faceless attack our fellow citizens in, law, in Las Vegas. No political agenda, no religion, no race, no lifestyle choice. A simple act of evil. We ask that you touch those people left behind, that they understand why, why they were taken away from them. And maybe one day they'll understand that the reason why is because in the monuments and the headstones that they'll see, the dash that indicates when they were born and when they passed away on that faithful day, that what they did during their life was good and what, who is left behind will do even better. Finally, Lord, I thank you for being so safe here, for our police, our fire, our first responders, all those who make us so safe every day that we take for granted that it makes us humble to understand why. All these I ask in your name, Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And now the pledge, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Commissioner Condor. Uh, first item of business is item 4A to consider appointments. I will, use, I will do these first one by itself and then do the other three for you now. So the Drug Alliance Steering Committee would like to reappoint uh, Gary Hall to a three-year term expiring September 1, 2020. Appoint Carl Lewis to a three-year term expiring September 1st, 2020. And appoint Larry Condor to a three-year term expiring October the 3rd, 2020. I would make a motion to approve. Motion. Second. Any comments from the commission? Any comments from the public? Hearing none, all in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Mayor, I need to recuse, please. I knew that. Thank you, sir. <laughs> all opposed? Motion carries. We'll do the next three in order. Dugan Best Neighborhood Alliance Board reappoint Charles Hatchett, Bobby McCormick, and Cecil Phillips to a two-year term expiring September the 25th, 2019. The Human Relations Commission reappoint Caitlin Nonweiler and J.D. Warfield to a three-year term expiring October the 4th, 2020. And to the River Park Center Board reappoint Tony Cecil to a three-year term expiring June 30th, 2020. I'd like to have a motion to approve. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Item 4B is to consider approval of minutes dated September 12, 2017. Could I have a motion to approve? Motion. Second. Any comments, please? Had time to read them. Um, all in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Okay, tonight we have Steve Lynn. Counselor, item number five, please. Thank you, Mayor, Commissioners. Oh. Ordinance 26-2017, an ordinance abandoning and closing portion of an alley at 1843 Willis Avenue between Willis Avenue and Calhoun Street in the city of Owensboro, Kentucky, at the request of Charles D. and Laura J. Haken, publicly read for approval on second reading this third day of October, 2017. I'll make a motion to approve. 
So moved. Okay, any comments from the public? Comments from the commission? City Manager, do you have anything? Mayor, this is an alley that is in the northwest quadrant of the city, just north of Parrish Avenue, that runs parallel to Bosley, north of Willis Avenue, behind the Boost Mobile strip mall. All the abutting property owners concur with this. This will save the city maintenance costs for taking care of that alley. Staff recommends. Thank you, sir. We'll have a roll call vote, Ms. Cece. Commissioner Vallada? Yes. Commissioner Condor? Yes. Mayor Watson? Yes, please. Mayor Pro Tem Glenn? Yes. Commissioner Smith Wright? Okay, motion carries. Item 5B, Councilor. Ordinance 27 2017, an ordinance levying ad valorem taxes for municipal purposes for the fiscal year commencing July 1st, 2017 and ending June 30th, 2018 at the rate of 26.20 cents per $100 of assessed valuation of real property, 25.30 cents per $100 of assessed valuation of personal property, and 30.30 cents per $100 of assessed valuation of vehicles and providing for collection and apportionment of the same. Publicly read for approval on second reading this third day of October, 2017. I'll make a motion to approve. That was second, please. Second. Any comments from the public? Any comments from the commission? If it could, Mayor. Commissioner Condor. Thank you, Mayor. You're welcome. Um, in looking at the property tax that's proposed, one of the biggest factors that I looked at that I believe that everyone needs to truly understand, especially why that I will be voting the way that I vote, is number one, is the biggest one actually is the Moody's credit rating. And if I could, I believe you know, uh, City Manager Parrish and Angela, we had discussed this briefly, and I'd like for the public to understand where we are today as far as our credit rating, how we got there, and how important is it for the property tax to be at the level that it is, so, and relate that back to just the average residential customer, if I could, please, sir. Okay. Who's, who you want me to call on? City Manager, please. Beth, could you bring that up? Uh, Commission, uh, Commissioner Connor spoke to us about this. I wanted to run through just a couple slides real quickly and then turn it over to Angela to talk about this Moody's rating. The first is the numbers for uh, the last fiscal year are in, as you know, and you can see this is our reserve account. This is the equivalent of the family savings account. And you'll see year after year after year that's going down and the projection for 1718. You will see also that with the property tax increase over the next four year period, we tried to design a plan with the commission not to solve this all in one year to an aggressive tax increase, but to try to fix this over four years. You see in that 2021, that red uh, uh, GFOA standard, the Government Finance Officers Association standard of where we should be, we're climbing close to that standard, we should be there. That is within the, the realm of uh, hitting that mark in 2021. Now, without the property tax increase, i show you that gap is larger in 2021. Go back, we're there. 2021, without the tax increase, we're not there. Commissioner Condor asked me to point out in a slide we had in a previous discussion that this is the Moody's rating system. If you look, a city like Scottsdale, Arizona, who traditionally wins awards every year for being a well-run, well-financed city, they were at the AAA-1 level. You'll see that Davis County Fiscal Court is at the AA-2 level. You drop down to the B series, you see Owensboro Health at the BAA-3 level, and Detroit, Michigan at the B-2 level. I'll ask Mayor, uh, if you concur, Angela Hamrick can pick up this discussion with what the rates, uh, Moody's ratings look like. Ms. Hamrick? Uh, yes, uh, Commissioner Con uh, Condor had asked that um, I step through um, the rating changes and um, reasons why uh, that uh, we were down downgraded. Uh, you'll notice on the chart here. Your um, mic a little closer to. You. Okay. All right. You'll notice on the chart here that uh, Big A 
double little a, we'll call that triple A, is, is the highest level uh, to be achieved. The city of Owensboro was at double uh, A3 um, back prior to December of 2014. Now, um, what Moody's will do, they will evaluate a city's um, financial status, um, their economic um, future, uh, things that, uh, their financial management, just all, all the things that make up a city. Every time that we issue bonds, I'll have a call with Moody's and, and answer any questions they may have. They'll look closely at our audit as well as our budget. Um, and it just so happened that back in December 2014, that was the bond issue uh, for the Owensboro Riverport Authority bonds. Uh, Moody's downgraded us from a double A3 to an A1. And um, one of the primary reasons for that downgrade was that uh, we had not been taking our property tax increase. They uh, like to see cities take that increase. It's a stable, um, economically sound uh, revenue source, and it spreads that tax over a, a quite large base. Um, and they don't like to see a city be so reliant on the economically sensitive revenues um, as much. Now, um, you'll see here on the chart, uh, the next downgrade occurred back in May of 2016, and that's when we did some refinancing. And uh, we weren't borrowing extra money, we did not extend the loan term. What we did, we refinanced um, because the rates were lower, and it was actually a beneficial thing for the city to do. However, Moody's dinged us once again uh, because we brought them to our attention by issuing the bonds. Uh, once again, it was no surprise that uh, one of the primary reasons for that downgrade, once again, was our not taking the property tax increase. So um, at any rate, we're down to A2. Uh, we went from A1 to A2 back in May. We uh, are still at A2 as of today. Um, I have heard from Moody's um, a couple weeks ago with a follow-up list of questions. They are, um, we have a negative outlook, or A2 with a negative outlook. And so they are looking to see if we are, in fact, um, addressing their concerns, um, addressing the deficits we've had, and, and our forward-looking financials. I think they'll be quite happy uh, to hear uh, that we are taking this increase this time. But um, that, that is their chart, and as you can see, um, that goes all the way up from AAA all the way down uh, to C. And one thing too that is noteworthy is um, the better your rate, uh, your rating, the better your uh, interest rate is. Okay, so uh, not only do we look good having a better Moody's rating, it also uh, turns over into a better interest rate costing the city less money on the money that they borrow. So a higher rating is important to the city for, for several reasons, but that's two, two of them. So um, at, any, at any rate, that's, that's kind of in a nutshell uh, an explanation of, of this graph. Um, you'll see BA1 is where we get into the junk bond status. But uh, if anyone has any questions, I'm happy to answer them. So Ms. Hamrick, you, you stated that uh, Moody's called with a list of questions. What prompted that phone call? We did not refinance. We're not issuing any more debt, correct? Okay, no more debt. Correct. Correct. Uh, okay, so why would Moody's, in whatever time frame, I suppose in within the last two months, make a phone call to just reevaluate the city I, off of what, what premise? Why, why would they do that? Yeah, I touched base with our uh, financial bond, uh, bond financial advisor, Stan Kramer. Um, he works with Moody's uh, closely. And um, it was a, of his opinion that they are um, just keeping track of the negative outlook and um, just tr keeping their ratings current. And so um, that's his opinion. So when you, when you submit your new information, yes, considering what may, may occur to this evening, we may have a good outcome, maybe bad, but we would hope that at, at a minimum, the negative outlook could at least turn to stable. Certainly. The hope maybe maybe it, it, it won't show up that way, but certainly. And it's unknown at this time if they even intend to change our rating. Okay. Um, okay. I in my tenure here with the city, I've not received um, any communication from Moody's outside of doing a bond issue. This, this is this is a first. So um, I will get those understandable. Yes, yes, I will I can add to that. Um, I did call Henderson and uh, Bowling Green, my counterparts, 
and just to see if they had received such questions and they had not heard from Moody's uh, in that way. And I do know that Henderson issued bonds in February of 2017, more recent than us. So I, I think it all just goes to um, twice they've told us, you know, rely on your stable revenue stream. We continue to have the deficits. I think, I think it's just kind of a following up, if you will. And the reason why I've asked this question, why I believe this is so important, is not only for our credit rating, interest rates if necessary for, for issuing debt, which we're not going to, uh, but it also may be a good indicator to be able to find out, do we have other businesses outside of our community that's looking at Owensboro? One of those indicators is your Moody's rating. How stable are you? What are you doing in your community to be able to stabilize your revenue streams and your expenses for me to be able to evaluate you as a good place to be. That's correct. To establish Certainly. businesses or not. Mm -hmm. So to me, it's very paramount that we can address the Moody's rating. And if this helps it, that's why I will be voting the way I vote. Thank you. Thank you. A couple other things that I'd like to add to that. Oh, Mr. Glenn, are you ready? No, uh, yeah, I had a question. No, yeah, go ahead. go ahead. Okay. So what impact, if any, Angela, uh, Ms. Hamrick, would the potential for us to have to pick up two and a half million dollars in additional expenses to cover our employee pensions. Does that play a role in the math with Moody's? Does that play a role in the math? Yeah, with I mean, that, that's an impending threat by our legislature. Certainly, and, so I, it, and, and it's uh, all the cities are facing that. And so um, I, my personal opinion is, I don't see the state pushing cities to do all that catch up in one year. I, I, I am hopeful that won't happen. I don't see that that's feasible financially. Um, but, you know, we're not unlike any other city in the state of Kentucky. They're all facing that pension crisis, if you will. So um, it, it's something that we will have to evaluate how it affects us financially, what, what the state, where they land on their decision, and relook at our financial uh, future, the forecast, and, and then make some decisions from that point forward. But right now, it's, it's, it's unknown. Okay, and if, may I follow up with one more, Mayor, and then I'll be done. The other question is, and this is just this is just more like like uh, defining the terms. Moody's, as I understand it, because this came up years ago, defined things like the convention center and Smothers Park as quote non-essential spending, even though it's done incredible things for developing our city and making us more attractive to business. That plays a part in the variable of the calculus of dropping our rating as well, right? That they consider those non-essential investments. You're correct, Commissioner. Um, that was a concern of theirs that we continued um, to borrow money for what they what they call a non-essential project, and um, in in their in their uh, clinical definition of essential, this is Moody's clinical definition. They see essential borrowing as um, a firehouse, um, a police house, or city hall, streets, things that are you know that every city has to have. Uh, and they're not, I don't think they're saying that the convention center is a bad decision. That's not what they're saying. They're just in their clinical definition calling it non-essential. Right. But I thought for the public it would be helpful to have Certainly. that out. Mm -hmm. Mayor, thank you so much. You're welcome. Anybody else have any comments before I kind of wade in on this? You know, a lot of this has to do with the fact that it what that our debt uh, kind of got ballooned, let's say. Uh, because this property, the property tax wasn't taken for eight years. So that puts you kind of in a hole to begin with. Um, and with the assessments for 2017, the, in, uh, the property assessments increased by 2.92, which means the, um, looking at it, the average impact on individuals, $2.97 on an average home of 100. Correct. And you know, when you long range plan, when you're trying to figure out, you know, what potholes not to drop in, no pun intended, Andrew, we have a lot of potholes. Um, you can't predict some of the things that happen, like Bimbo Bakery closing, uh, it costs about $90,000 in lost occupational, not counting. Uh, closing of one of the OMU units, uh, another 25000 if the uh, OMU Unit 2 closes, it's another $100,000 loss. The mall assessment's being reduced um, because of the, uh, 
if reduced down to the appealed amount, uh, approximately $60,000 of lost property tax revenue there. Uh, known current businesses, four of them are moving to the TIF. That's approximately another $37,000. And the businesses that closed in 2016 were approximately 125000 And to Commissioner Glenn's point, you know, if we do have to increase our contribution for the pension, uh, it's about two point six million, something like that. Two point six, upwards of maybe three, in, to in, three in that yeah. range. Mm -hmm. So all those factors weren't even included in the long range plan when we talked about taking the four percent. So as it turned out, it's what one point zero eight effect of the four percent. So um, I think it's so uh, warranted didn't have to do it as a con fiscally conservative guy but the hole we're trying to dig out of uh, we need some, some help so any other discussion okay I'm lost Are we voting now is that right Sid? we had public comment no one came forward oh we got uh oh <laughs> This is a first. <laughs> My name's Barbara Watson. I live at 3622 Bridge Point in the city of Owensboro. And my question is, if we were warned by, by Moody that this was an issue, why was it not taken at that time? And why was it not taken in the previous eight, eight years if it was a, a legitimate, good business practice thing to do? Why was it not done before? I'm not answering that because I have to go home with you. So, city manager, I would just say it's uh, we often s on the staff we often say there's the democracy, which are the elected officials, and there's the bureaucracy, which is the staff. The staff makes recommendations, but the the democracy at the time, the five elected officials get to choose. Either we did not sell it well enough, or for some other reason, the elected officials decided not. To accept that advice, and Messenger Inquirer had several articles on it. Several statements were made. Uh, the staff recommended it the last eight years. It was not acted on. Comment, if respectfully, to, that's a great question, Barbara. It really is. Um, there are two reasons we didn't. When I first got on here, one of the things is we had a lot of inflow, a lot of it, new income from all the construction, like the hospital on. We really weren't in that bad of shape. So the property tax proposal comes up. We don't really need to do it. That was true also in the second, basically, two years of my time being on the commission. But the final thing is that nobody wants to raise property taxes on anybody. And one of the issues we had during that time was utility rate increases, RWRA, OMU. We literally had the conversation that we want to add this on top of those rate increases. And we decided at that time we didn't. Well, I guess when Moody's comes to you and says this is the problem or one of the problems, I, 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 that was my thing. You know, because that was kind of huge when the Moody's uh, adjusted the, the rating. Well, it's incremental. If you look at, I mean, you said it's like one rate change, then another. It wasn't, didn't happen all at once, right. these rate adjustments. And you have to keep in mind, if you really look at Moody's, you can argue with some of their decisions, mm -hmm. like what's essential and non-essential spending. Uh, but having said that, I, I said probably a year ago, we should probably take a property tax increase at least the last time it came up. So okay. I will certainly take full responsibility for the notion we should have taken it the last time. Finish? Well, I'm just, I'm just going to say that during my tenure here that I have always agreed that we should take the, the hike, the, the, the rate increase. But, you know, uh, when people are running for office and all of that kind of stuff and they're going, well, you know, that's not a good thing. If you're running for office, nobody wants you to raise taxes. And I'm not one of those people. I wanted to raise it when we first started talking about it. And uh, uh, our city manager and Angela were very open to us and telling us that we should be taking the, the tax increase. But uh, for whatever reason, it just didn't pass. Well, on the other side of that is that's the only tax where everybody gets some skin in the game. If you just do it all on the back 
of the working guy with the occupational and net profits. I think that's unfair because some of those folks never enjoy all these things that we spent money on, convention centers and parks and stuff like that. So it is does spread it out a little bit even more evenly for people that, you know, are not working and that have, I mean, my mom's 89, she didn't like, you know, she didn't like her property tax going up, but it does spread it out a little bit more. So having said that, I'll call for the question. A roll call vote. Ms. Good. Commissioner Condor? Yes. Mayor Watson? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Glenn? Yes. Commissioner Smith Wright? Aye. Commissioner Bellotta? Yes. Thank you, Commissioners. It's nice to be unified on a very tough subject, and I think it shows the public that we are trying to work ourselves out of this quandary, that it is hard to fall out of a hole. Okay, thank you. Next item is it six. Lynn, thank you. Ordinance 28-2017, an ordinance amending references to Parks and Recreation Manager to Parks and Recreation Director in Chapter 9, Article 1 of the Owensboro Municipal Code, and further amending Chapter 9, Article 1, Section 19-9, providing for a maximum suspension period of 96 hours by Parks and Recreation Director, Public Works Director, or Supervisor or Caretaker in charge of the park, and further amending Chapter 19, Article 1, Section 19-5, to establish hours of use for Smothers Park, Ronald L. Logston Spray Park, the Atkinson Greenbelt Park, and the Street Soccer Court in Legion Park. Introduced and publicly read on first reading this third day of October 2017. Since it's the first reading, there'll be no vote, but I would ask City Manager if he has any comments, please. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, commissioners, this is uh, one change of substance and many cleanups. Anytime we change an ordinance, we always try to look through it and clean up anything that needs to be done. The first is that Amanda Rogers is no longer a uh, manager of a department. She is a department head, uh, has been that for over a year. This is no change in pay to her, but it aligns the ordinance with our organization. The second is parks hours are generally 5 a.m. to 10 p.m. unless otherwise posted. Now we have made a minor administrative change in that our ordinance reads 24 hours spelled out. We keep that, but we have added the numerical 2-4 to be in standard with everything else we do for Legion Park, English Park Shoreline, also adding the numerical 2-4. Smothers Park uh, minus the playground, the spray park, adding the 2-4 uh, to it. The Green Belt, which is new, adding that it is open from 5 a.m. to dusk. It has always been that, but we've not had it in our ordinance. The change of substance includes suspensions. If someone does something uh, serious in our parks they can be told immediately leave the parks you're not welcome here the public works director and the parks director have the authority now to suspend someone for the parks for 48 hours then bring it to the city manager's attention it is my task to, to sit in an administrative judgment and decide if that person should be suspended for a greater period of time now that's subject to appeal to the city commission the city commission can override that what we are asking is that uh, time period that the public works director and the parks director can suspend somebody be changed from 48 hours to 96 hours and the reason is it is difficult to investigate put all the facts together and put that into a letter and be sure it is delivered and accepted by that person within that 48 hour period so we're asking that be 96 hours for that temporary suspension before it comes to the city manager's office thank you sir any other comments Mr. Smith Wright. I have a question. Sure. Um, are cars allowed on the grass at McConnell Plaza? No, Commissioner. Well, I saw that Saturday, and I and it it bothered me a little bit because there were two cars that were driving around on that, and I was thinking that that would kind of maybe mess up the grass or whatever. But I d I didn't know. Please please contact them immediately. Get a police officer. Over. Okay, go item number 6B, Mr. Lane, please. Ordinance 29-2017, an ordinance of the Davis County Fiscal Court and the City of Owensboro, jointly creating a new section in Article 3 of the Owensboro Municipal Code prohibiting the operation of golf carts, low-speed vehicles, or utility vehicles 
on all public roadways, streets, or highways within Davis County and the City of Owensboro. Introduced and publicly read on first reading this third day of October 2017. Okay, first reading, no vote. City Manager. Thank you, Mayor. The General Assembly passed uh, a new KRS, a revised statute, allowing golf carts or golf cart type vehicles to deliver express envelopes and packages. It, it's aimed at folks like UPS, FedEx to make deliveries. Um, UPS has signaled their intent to begin one November through the holiday season through 15 January to make deliveries in neighborhoods by these golf carts. Um, the city staff is opposed on safety reasons and in conjunction with physical court, I spoke to Judge Mattingly. He and I agreed that we should write a uh, joint city county ordinance and propose it to his uh, court and to this city commission and recommend that this not be allowed in Owensboro. Unless you take action, this will be allowed and they will be able to drive golf carts in neighborhoods to deliver packages. This, uh, I should point out, Mayor, uh, Commissioners, this map, uh, this will be allowed everywhere on that map except where it's red or green. The green is the green belt, you can't drive on that the red or major streets they couldn't be allowed on, they could drive these golf carts anywhere in the city on this. Now they've told me they don't plan to use them anywhere except dense neighborhoods where it makes sense, but you can see they could do it anywhere in the city. They would have to have some kind of container to store these things in the middle of the street as well, won't they? They, they would have a place to get store the golf cart to get it out. They would, Mayor, they've talked about putting a, a pod. You, you've seen these pods in people's driveways. Um, they've talked about putting a pod, and the way it might work is one evening the big brown truck shows up, offloads packages for that neighborhood into the pod. A golf cart goes into the pod. They lock it up. Uh, the next morning, the driver, the part-time driver shows up, unlocks it, pulls the cart out, loads it up with packages, makes delivery. And then later in the evening, or maybe later in the same day, the brown truck comes back in and, and re-delivers. The problem with that is you would have these pods sitting out on the street. That's one option, which OPD says they're opposed to, of course. It's a, it's a hazard to drivers just having this pod sitting out there. I spoke to the, OP, the UPS officials in Louisville who were behind this plan. They said that if pods were not allowed on our streets, then what they would do is go to local businesses or churches and ask to rent space on their property to put the pot in, or they would even go to a homeowner and say, can we rent your garage for the holiday season? Safety is the largest concern that the police department is against this proposal and negligent, or uh, um, uh, the legal department is opposed to it because of the negligence issue with those pods being on the street. Thank you, sir. Any discussion? had one quick question yes Commissioner Glenn. regarding the language of the or the ordinance um, would this impact in any way the you know the Wendell Foster folks that are in the mobile wheelchairs at all the language exempts them they would still be able to navigate throughout the community as they do mayor commissioners that's correct to be no change this is specifically yeah. aimed at uh, this KRS and the deliveries by low speed. Speed. low speed vehicles are, are uh, defined in the statute and it would not encompass uh, that's the wording i'm not worried about yeah i'm not worried i know what a golf cart is i'm just saying a low-speed vehicle would that be defined that's a good point that is a good point to try and separate because i think those mopeds are dangerous as anything on the street because i've had to put several of those folks back together after they got here well anyway any other discussion thank you what is the rule officer speed Talk about mopeds, Jeff. please. Uh, mopeds. Assistant Chief and I have spoken yes. a lot about mopeds in the last. Yes, uh, Jeff Speed, Assistant Chief, OPD. Uh, for mopeds, anything? Of, is this on? Yeah, just raise no. it up. A little too tall, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you have to be have a have a, you have to have a driver's license, of course, and uh, anything above 50 cc's or runs above 35 miles an hour, you have to have it actually registered and insured, just like you would a motorcycle. That's basically what it is. You know, that's something that we're concerned with, with the golf carts, because we feel like it would be opening Pandora's box. It's very difficult to enforce uh, the underage driving of mopeds when you get into juveniles because it's so rampant. It's everywhere, and uh, it takes a lot of hours if you, when, when you address that. So if you take on 
uh, with the golf carts and you have kids operating those and they're not insured, you're looking at increased injury wrecks, uh, people driving without licenses and further problems for us. Now but the, mo the mopeds are very difficult. Deaths with mopeds are very difficult. They're stolen all the time. And it's something we're dealing with on a daily basis. This guy on a moped passed me on 4th Street today. He was laying supine on the seat, his feet going out the back, right. with a helmet on backwards, holding on the, the handlebars, and I guarantee he was going faster than a low speed vehicle. Yes, sir. I, I've <laughs> you know seen that guy? Him, I've seen him at night going out 60 when I was off duty. But, but you know, we've actually issued that gentleman a citation. and. Uh, and I called Claude Porter, I've not heard back yet, but uh, it was dismissed in court and the officer wasn't subpoenaed or anything to, to the court process. So, yeah. you know, it's something we've got a lot of uh, community complaints about that individual. He used to try to pop wheelies and now he's progressed into laying down on his motorcycle yeah, and riding it. Like he's taking a but, nap, uh, I mean, he's a home But yeah, we, we agree it's an issue and, and we've addressed it and sort of awaiting a response to, to what avenue to go. Now, nobody would rather have a golf cart downtown than me wandering around in these festivals and stuff, but I just think it's not a very safe thing. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Counselor. Can we move on to 6C, please? Yes, sir. Ordinance 30-2017, an ordinance affirming and adopting the revised goals and objectives of the comprehensive plan for Orangeboro, Whitesville, and Davis County. Introduced and publicly read on first reading this third day of October 2017. Okay, this is the first reading, no vote. Any comment from the public? Any comment from the commission? Hearing none, okay, commissioner. I guess we go to municipal orders and there aren't any. Thanks, Dave. Uh, city manager items, Mr. Parrish. Thank you, Mayor. I'm asking uh, you, Mayor and Commission, if you would consider the following personal appointments tonight. Seth Abel, probationary, full-time, non-civil service appointment, road worker, effective October 16th, Ethan Board, probationary, full-time, non-civil service appointment, firefighter, effective October 16th. Misty Harrison, probationary, full-time, non-civil service, promotional appointment, bus driver, effective October 16th. Regular, full-time, non-civil service appointment, secretary with the police department for Joe Ellen McKendall's, effective October 3rd. Thomas Davis, Hannah Douglas, and Andrew Hurt, regular, full-time, non-civil service appointments, police officers, effective October 11th and Sarah Rice, probationary, full-time, non-civil service appointment, telecommunicator, effective October 30th. Okay, we have a motion to approve. So, so moved. moved. Second, please. Second. Any comments from the public? Uh, how about the commission? I, I, I was asked when someone saw our agenda, how many of these are new employees, sir? Let's see. Uh, Seth Abel is probationary. She's new. Ethan Board is probationary new. Uh, Misty Harrison is probationary promotional, meaning she went from one level of job to higher, so that's new. Joellen McKendall's uh, is uh, regular, meaning she was completed her probation and is being brought on as full-time off of probation. Davis, Douglas, and Hurt are uh, regular full-time appointments, meaning they have completed, I'm looking for Josh, completed their probationary period. And then we have uh, Sarah Rice, who's a new telecommunicator. Thank you. All right. We'll ask for a vote now, please. All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Item number 8B, city manager comments, please, sir. Nothing further, thank you, Mayor. Okay, you're welcome. Communication from elected officials. Commissioner Smith-Wright, please. Um, Mayor, I just wanted to uh, tell you that during the air show, I had, um, I was running into all these different people, and I saw a young man and, and his mother, and they were so excited to be in Owensboro. They said that they drove six hours from a place called Wayland, Kentucky. I've never heard of it before. And I mean, you would have thought they died and gone to heaven. They were having such a good time here. And um, so I just wanted to tell you that. And, and then also that over the weekend, I had my 50th class reunion and uh, next year. <laughs> and then also it was the uh, anniversary of the girls' first 
uh, state track team. So it was our 50th reunion also. So we had a good time this weekend. Congratulations. Oh, and we have some leadership Owensboro people out here that we needed to. I wanted to recognize. Leadership Owensboro recognized. Mm -hmm. Hello. <laughs> Thank you. All right, Mr. Glenn. Uh, three quick items. First is, of course, several of us attended, all of us attended the Neighborhood Alliance picnic the other night, even though it was at the Convention Center, and it was a wonderful event. I want to thank and congratulate all of our new and long-term uh, members of each board. They do great work out in the community, and the mayor spoke and the fire chief spoke, thought they did a great job. The second is uh, the grad dinner. I want to congratulate Judge Executive Al Manningly for winning uh, Official of the Year, and also Daryl Higginbotham for being named Citizen of the Year, the head of Independence Bank. Uh, that reflects well on the leadership in our community. Uh, and then finally, I want to extend my sincerest condolences to Mayor Carolyn Goodwin and the people of the city of Las Vegas and the loss of 59 lives, 517 injured. I grew up in Las Vegas, and uh, my father was there when they fired the MGM happened, and the same thing occurred in that people rose up showed great resolve and were incredibly compassionate and helpful in times of crisis. And they did so again in the midst of 22,000 people being shot at from you know, a high-speed rifle. So our condolences to that city. It's senseless, as Commissioner Connor said, it's a senseless act. And we, our prayers go out to the families who lost loved ones and those who were injured. Thank you, sir. And I will send the mayor condolences from this commission as you asked. Uh, Commissioner Condor. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, You're welcome. First and foremost, the um, person who will take me to heaven is uh, sitting out in the audience, my wife, Rosemary. Uh, I love her with all my heart. Um, I also want to make sure the public knows that, you know, the mayor is, is talking about how difficult it is to fall out of a hole, you know, for our city. But I can tell you this, that this commission is truly working very hard to get, do everything possible, whether it be through cutting expenses, working harder, or do everything else we can to be able to place our city back on a good track for a financial wherewithal. It's important to, I believe, all of us up here. Uh, those decisions we've made and will be making are very hard to do. It's not taken very lightly at all. Uh, and I don't take that very lightly. Uh, but I am proud of our home. We have a great home. I will put us up against anybody. And I believe it will, uh, everything will turn out well. Give us a little time. Thank you very much, Mayor. You're welcome, Commissioner Condor. I mean, uh, Delata, excuse me, Larry. I um, Jay, I really apologize for that. Thank you, Mayor. It's <laughs> quite all right. Is that slam? Is he back I don't here know. slamming I'm, me over I'm here? That's what he's doing. Well, just to echo on what Commissioner Condor said, it, there are some tough decisions that have been made, and we're on a path of hopefully correction. And that's what we intend to do is continue on that path. So. Uh, bear with us. We're going to keep working hard. We're digging in. We're going to make things better. We promise. Um, just a quick shout out to the folks at Gradsa and the Buddy Walk over the weekend. Had a fantastic turnout. Probably one of the largest turnouts and one of the biggest fundraisers in the community. Cool deal. Um, yeah, it was, it was really fantastic to be a part of that group. And uh, just uh, hats off to the Owensboro Fire Department, Police Department, and first responders who were participatory along with everyone else that was, that was down there giving a hand and, and volunteering their time. So, um, that's all I got. Thank you, Mayor. You're welcome. I, too, want to congratulate uh, Judge Executive uh, Al Maddingly for the award of the Wendell H. Ford Legislative Leader Award. You know, he's been messing around in city politics for a long time. He does a good job in Frankfort with Keiko and with his trade association, so he's a credit to our community. Next, I'd like to congratulate our Orangeboro Police Department member who was awarded a recipient of the River Valley Behavioral Health six county region during this year's CIT banquet held in Bowling Green. Rick Latanzio. Latanzio. All right, that's close. Um, he's an 18 year veteran of the department, was recognized for his efforts stemming from a 2017 call for service involving a distraught female. So he brings uh, pride to our whole community for his recognition, and if you'll please pass that on to him. Um, uh, also tonight, I want to announce a thing that's, that I've been going, that's been going on for a week or so now. It's, uh, we've stemmed it called the OBKY Project. And I've kept this kind of closely held 
because what we what has happened is that we've uh, lined up about 12 or 15 different constituent groups and it's not really patterned after uh, we the people I think sometimes those questions are a little bit interesting uh, but try and help us as a group uh, give us some direction of what our community is interested in uh, we have had uh, several we had some staff from uh, the, the uh, city staff uh, we've had um, uh, some of uh, the elderly and there's just we've just divided up into eight or ten groups we have a uh, Chad Mills is doing a great job of trying to round us up some the trades. We have uh, the 40 under 40 group, the Chamber Young Professionals, the Chamber, uh, some EDC folks, and they're all coming in together in their own different little groups. And um, I'm not there. It started last week while I was busy, and I really don't want anybody else. I didn't. City manager said, "Do you want?" Ed or I to go so we can kind of tell them what we can do and what we can't do. And I said, uh-uh. We'll let these people speak their mind, give us their opinion of their community, and give them an opportunity to, to suggest ideas of things we can go. I told David Johnson, is uh, one of the leads, a former city commissioner and public school system uh, executive, and Fred Reeves, who's a former school executive and chairman of the planning and zoning, and he's done all kinds of things in the community. We feel very comfortable letting them lead this discussion. Uh, we've had good uh, reports. I've not seen anything written down yet, but I think it's, uh, it's just something that these folks don't need to be encumbered by this, the commissioners or anybody else, city staff, whatever, and just let them talk and do their own thing and then we'll then when we get some of these ideas together then I'll meet individually with each commissioner and give them a report and then we'll put together some ideas of uh, possibly uh, some things that uh, our community can do because I only had a couple of criteria one it's got to be stuff that doesn't cost any money <laughs> and secondarily uh, I just you know and I believe this all ideas are welcome to this group just don't get upset if we don't use your idea so I'm excited by the end of October, maybe the first week in November, project will be finished. And I'm looking for some feedback from the commission and the city staff and maybe too, Austin, we might let you in on it too. So uh, I'm happy to announce that tonight. I, I apologize to my elected group, but I just really, you know, I haven't gone to it. I haven't instructed David or Fred to do anything. I said, you go in there and talk to these people and let them give you what they feel like is uh, our ideas for our community. So it's called the OBKY Project, and you'll be hearing more from it soon. Okay, at this time, I'd like to recognize a fellow compadre, Mr. Leland Hancock. Um, as most of you know, Little Leland, like we call him, who has been um, at the city for two thousand since two thousand and three, working as a leader and facility maintenance superintendent. He, uh, which morphed into public works, which uh, entails uh, different jobs. And it um, in two thousand eight, he became the deputy director of the public works operation. So, as most of you know, he's leaving. He's going to. Davis County Public School System and I know a lot of us are sad to see him go but um, you know sometimes it's been said that even Eagles need a push so you're going out on your own and we pray that um, you have success uh, in your new venture and um, I don't normally do this because I believe it's a, a wrong thing to do but those of you that know me know that I'm not afraid to do the wrong thing but I'd like to present uh, Mr. Hancock with the uh, key to the city, saying that this key will unlock the door when you get tired of the public school system. You'll be welcome. <laughs> okay? Right. Appreciate that. Thank you. 
Leland Hancock. Well, technically, I'm still Deputy Director of Public Works, so I'll keep that for now. Uh, you know, I've been fortunate enough to work with uh, some great individuals, uh, from Bob Whitmer and Tony Cecil to Bill Parrish, Wayne, and I've got several staff members down there that really uh, I can't take the credit for. All the storms and the different events that we've gone through and the things we've weathered and uh, the events that just uh, build that family environment that we have. and. Uh, Within a city, uh, we, I think everybody feels that way. Public Works is a little special. Uh, we like to think of ourselves a little different. Uh, I kind of uh, jokingly say that I'm Jack Sparrow down there. They're more of uh, guidelines than rules, and uh, we won't tell the city manager that now. But uh, anyway, we. Hey, uh, you're free, man. Let her rip. <laughs> <laughs> there, there's a, a great group of individuals throughout this entire city that believe for this city. That uh, they believe in what we're doing. They believe in the progress that we made. And they believe in the direction we're going in and uh, they're glad to take part in that and uh, they're glad to be part of it and they're glad to go to work every day and to have an environment where they enjoy uh, not only their fellow co-workers but they enjoy their jobs and uh, just uh, the fun that we have doing the duties of being uh, uh, caretakers of the city so I thank uh, my group over here that I've worked dearly with and uh, I've got a lot of good lifelong friends and uh, I intend to keep those and uh, I may take you up on that one day with this key so thank I'll you very be much gone by then so you'll have to take it up with somebody else i appreciate that you will thank you all thank you <laughs> okay item number 10 is open public forum members of the audience are invited to address the city commission on any matter of public concern that was not on tonight's agenda comments are limited to issues within the scope and responsibility of this commission this time, anyone who wishes to address the City Commission, please make their way to the podium to be recognized, state their name and address for the clerk's record, and limit their remarks to 30 seconds or uh, 30 minutes, excuse me, 30 minutes. Or, 30 minutes. 30 minutes, three minutes, yeah, there you go. <laughs> Just seeing if you're awake down there. Yeah, so. right. <laughs> Since the item is not on the agenda, no response is required from City staff or the Commission, and the Mayor reserves the right to give him as much time as he wants, okay? So anybody from the public would like to speak? How about you leadership of Orangeboro people? Have you been to OBKY project yet? Uh-oh. Next. Nobody has anything? Brian, what are you doing here? Do you think it was a planning zone meeting or not? <laughs> Comprehensive plan. Okay, anybody have anything? Okay, well, and that'd be the fact. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Thank you all, staff. Thanks for coming tonight. Appreciate you.